Brainwashing for me occurs with, within the group that has very fixed agreements on, on what is right and what is wrong and you sort of, um, you know, you fall in line with these agreements or you're, you're basically treasonous to the rest of the group and uh, liable for punishment. So my next question is, do you feel that it's, it's the organization um, of Scientology that has been corrupted? I differ from many people, many other people who have left the cult in that I don't feel, I, I feel that um, Scientology can be used for good or bad. I feel that um, within this organization, it's used completely for bad. It's used for manipulation, control, money-making purposes, um, and it's an ins absolute insanity. I feel like the subject of Scientology itself is fascinating, worth further research. I feel that there are some very valid things about Scientology that could be played with and enjoyed by yourself out in the world experimenting. And I think that is a valid use of Scientology. Compare it to what you know, compare it to other religious philosophies, Go out, try a few things. If they work, great. If they, if they don't, you don't have to do it. Um, within the organization of science, the organized religion of Scientology, it's dogmatic. You do it this way, or there is a penalty, and that's that's the difference for me. Okay. So what I'm gonna, my next couple of questions that I'm gonna ask you is, um, how you came about to leave the organization itself. And I believe you're a member of Independent Scientology. And I'd also like you to talk about the benefits of Scientology, because I know a lot of the interviews I've done, people have talked about negative aspects. Mm. So I'd like to hear some positive aspects uh, from your side. So my first question <laughs> is... a very long subject. Oh, my Lord. So, my first so the first question, to break it down? Is uh, on leaving Scientology as, as an organization, how you came about to leave it, and the process, and did they try and stop you at any stage? My marriage was falling apart. Um, it had been doing for about three years, and I thought, you know, my marriage is falling apart. Scientology has the answers for everything, including marriage is falling apart. We will go to the highest mecca of Scientology technology. We will go to FLAG, and everything will be resolved, and we'll be happy, because I know it can be sorted out. Um, so my husband and I went to FLAG ready to resolve our marriage. Um, after a year and maybe like a year and a half, thinking, I'd, I'd arrived at a flag thinking this is going to resolve everything. After a year at flag trying to resolve my marriage, it was utterly decimated. My family was destroyed, my marriage was destroyed. You know, it's going to be a lot to get into all the details of everything, but basically I sort of was sitting actually at FLAG one day. <clears throat> I remember I was getting an interview. And during that interview, I was actually being told, uh, you need more Scientology, you need to give them, and we'd, we'd given tens of thousands of dollars to fix our marriage. I mean, we'd, we'd been paying. And I suddenly thought, you know what? We've been given all, you know, we keep being asked for more and more and more and more marriage. And if we just do this, this, this will, re more ma money, sorry, <laughs> not more marriage. If we just give more money, you know, and it's very much the thing with Scientology, more ma money, um, the next level, this will resolve everything. And it wasn't, it was getting worse and worse and worse. And I sort of finally woke up one day and, and went, this isn't working. It's making things work. And actually, 90% uh, of the problems I have in life and in my marriage are due to this organization. It's just... And during the interview, I was actually being told by a senior staff member in the cult church that I was responsible for everything and I was messing everything up and I was really messed up. And what really what the solution was was to basically, I needed five more intensives. I just completed a level, and I, I actually felt good. I said, look, I'm, I'm getting a divorce, the marriage isn't working out, I'm actually okay with this. And then I was told, well, no, you need, you know, you need lots more auditing, and it's, it's gonna cost about $20,000, and you really messed up. And I sat there, and I thought, you know what, I'm not messed up. 
you know, I've spent 20 years being involved with Scientology and I've actually, the whole time, with people telling me how messed up I am. And I sat there and I thought, I'm not messed up. There's nothing wrong with me. That's the point when I left. Um, and I went home. And I guess the next stage, moving on to your next question, was... Um, you know, you're not allowed to look at the internet as a Scientologist. You're not allowed to read negative stuff about the church. And I actually sat down in front of my computer and I thought, well, you know, I've, you know, I've heard that this ex-Scientologist Marty Rathburn used to work with um, the leader of the church, David Miscavige. And, I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to read all this stuff, but, you know, what's going to happen to me if I actually read it? Like, not, it, it was, It was... You know, one came after the other. It's like, first of it, it was like, I'm not messed up. And the second thing was, I can read whatever I want. I can read whatever I want. I can make my own. I don't need somebody telling me what I can or can't read or what decisions I can or can't make. I can make those decisions for myself. So I went on the internet and I started reading what other people had to say about Scientology. And that's how I found Marty. Marty Rathburn defected from the church and um, became a whistleblower. And he, um, along with um, Mike Rinder and Amy, and I knew these people. I knew Mike Rinder and I knew Amy Scobie. I didn't know them personally, but I, I'd known them from my career as a Sea member. And at the time there was a publication that came out from the church, the Freedom Magazine, slating these people and saying that, SPs and they're terrible and they're bad and you know as a Sea member you kind of build up the one of the things that's very attractive about the Sea is you know this whole idea of saving the planet and just dedicating your life to helping other people that's what Sea members are so I'm now reading a publication from the church saying these are terrible people these are awful people and I thought these were Sea members and every Sea member I, I have met has an honest um, intention to just the only reason they're there is to help other people they're, they're eating crap they're living like crap the only re why would you now say they're such these people are all bad because they've left and um, I wanted to know their stories so I started reading what they had to say and listening what to what they had to say and it was quite an eye-opener and they basically said um, you know, the church is corrupt. This is where the corruption is. This is where it started. This is who is responsible for the corruption, which were answers I'd been asking. It's, it's sort of, I like this religious philosophy. I like Scientology, but why is everything so bad? Why, is, why do I see people suffering? Why do I pe see people so angry? Why am I not allowed to talk to these angry people and apply our technology of like, hey, you know, what are you angry about? Talk to us. None of that was being applied. It was all, oh, these people are bad. These people are terrible and they're all suppressive. And, and to me, I, I guess I thought, well, that isn't Scientology. And then, you know, you have an independent movement that are basically, independent movement really, I guess, came, came apart, came to be by accident. I mean, Marty had left the church. A number of high-ranking Sirug members had left the church, and then a number of Scientologists, you know, went looking for them. And then this this group just sort of expanded and grew by itself. And I remember at some point they said, when we first all got together, you know, the question came up: Well, what are we going to call ourselves? And so we're independent, so and we're Scientologists, so independent Scientologists. And that's really how that. It's not a really a movement, it's just a group of people that came together, let's give ourselves a name. And that was my group. That This was a group of, and really a group of people that um, I grew very close to, people that were willing to stand up and tell the truth, people that weren't willing to, um, weren't willing to throw away the entire subject because they'd had a bad experience and wanted to, um, get on with their lives and, and be Scientologists without any interference.